In this video, we will demonstrate how to complete your tax year in four simple steps. Step one is to ensure that all your pay slips are finalized for all your pay frequencies. To check this, any open pay period will be denoted by an employee symbol. Once all your pay periods are finalized, there will be no employee symbols visible in any of your periods. Once all your pay slips have been finalized, Next, make sure that any outstanding full payment submissions are submitted to HMRC within your RTI screen. Submissions that have not yet been submitted to HMRC will be indicated by a blue cube and successfully completed submissions will be indicated by a green tick. Step 2 is to complete your HMRC payment schedule. If you have recoverable amounts to claim for statutory payments made to employees, then you must first choose the HMRC Payments menu and complete your monthly or quarterly payment schedule for each relevant period for which you have recoverable amounts. This will ensure that the correct recoverable amounts flow through to your final employer payment summary for the year. Step 3 is to prepare and submit your final employer payment summary for the year. To do this, go to your RTI menu and select the EPS option from the drop-down menu under the New tab. If you have recoverable amounts to claim, this will automatically be indicated on the EPS. Next, indicate on the EPS that this is your final submission by ticking the designated field provided and complete any other section if they apply to you. Simply submit to HMRC when ready. If reviewing your payroll at a later date, you can always check if your end-of-year EPS was submitted by simply selecting the EPS from the listing of RTI submissions. Once selected, the EPS will indicate if it included the final submission indicator. The final step in completing your tax year is to issue P60s to those employees who were in your employment as at the 5th of April 2015. You must do this by no later than the 31st of May 2015. Brightpay facilitates the printing and emailing of P60s on an individual basis or in a batch. Within employees, simply select an employee from the listing followed by the P60 option. Should you wish to print a single P60 for one employee, select whether you would like to print on HMRC's own P60 stationery or on blank paper and press print when ready. Alternatively, if you would like to print P60s for more than one employee at the same time, select the option View or Print P60 Certificates for Multiple Employees. Tick the employees for whom you wish to print a P60, followed by whether you wish to use your own HMRC stationery or to print to blank A4 paper. Click OK to preview the P60s on screen, followed by print when ready. Should you wish to email P60s to one or more employees, within Employees, select the option Email P60 Certificates under the P60 tab. On the left-hand side, select the employees for whom you wish to email P60s. Please note, only employees for whom you have email addresses entered will be displayed. On the right-hand side, enter a reply to email address. This is a mandatory field and a valid email address must be entered before the emails can be sent. If required, more than one CC email address can also be entered in the box below. Should you wish to amend the default subject line and body text, amend accordingly to suit your requirements. If you would like to password protect the P60s, simply tick the box provided. Employee passwords must be entered beforehand within the HR section in order for the P60 to be password protected on receipt. Password protection is recommended if the recipient is not in a secure environment when they receive their P60 and will ensure that the P60 can only be viewed when the password is entered. When ready to email the P60s, simply click Send Emails. In the event that you discover an error in any full payment submission for 2014-15, then an additional full payment submission can be submitted to HMRC up to and including the 19th of April 2015 to correct this. To prepare an additional full payment submission, simply reopen your pay slips, make your corrections and finalise accordingly. 
In the RTI menu of 2014-15 BrightPay, select the additional FPS option from the new menu. Select the employee or employees for whom you have made adjustments and select an appropriate late reporting reason from the drop-down menu. When ready, submit to HMRC to inform them of the amendments. If you discover an error in any of the year-to-date totals submitted in your final FPS or additional FPS for 2014-15 and it is now after the 19th of April 2015, then an earlier year update must be submitted. To prepare an EYU, simply reopen the pay slips, make your corrections and finalise accordingly. In the RTI menu of 2014-15 Bright Pay, select the EYU option from the new menu and select the employee or employees for whom you have made adjustments. When ready, submit to HMRC to inform them of the amendments. Please note an EYU reports an amendment made as opposed to restated year-to-date totals for the tax year. For example, if you previously submitted a year-to-date pay figure of £10,000 for an employee on your last FPS for the year, then realise that the figure should have been £12,000. After making the correction, the EYU will submit the change to the pay figure as plus £2,000. As a final note, if a payroll correction has also led to a change in your recoverable amounts, it is important to also submit a new EPS to HMRC to inform them of your amended year-to-date recoverable amounts. This is done in the same manner as before.